spanning the Severn estuary has been a challenge to engineers for hundreds of years. It's a ferocious place with fast flowing water and waves up to two and a half meters high, 80 mile an hour winds and the second highest tidal range in the world. In 1966 the first road bridge opened. It took five years to build and cost eight million pounds. That's over 100 million pounds today. The bridge was vital to trade and industry in South Wales and beyond, and delighted the growing breed of commuters using the motorways. But by the 1980s, it was carrying three times the traffic it had in the 60s. A new solution was needed to avoid massive delays between England and Wales, and a three-year project began in search of the answer. Engineers explored all options and decided a new bridge was needed. Its location was just three miles downstream, but it would completely revitalise the link between England and Wales that was beginning to choke up with congestion. The plan for the second Severn crossing was one of the most ambitious UK construction projects ever seen. The width of the estuary at English Stones is a massive three miles, and it would require the construction of what would be the longest river crossing in the UK. Consisting of five kilometres of approach viaducts, and a 456 metre span over the navigation channel. The project would also require 20 kilometres of new roads and would cost half a billion pounds. The government said yes to the initial plans in 1987 and in-depth research began, including surveys, exhibitions, tidal modelling and the development of new windshielding techniques to solve the problems faced by the existing Severn Bridge. After considering bids, in April 1990, Anglo-French consortium Lang GTM were chosen to design, build and operate a tolled crossing through private finance. The project had already been running for six years, but now it was time for the serious work to begin. The ambitious plans now had to become a reality, and that meant perfecting the design of the bridge down to the very last bolt. And to tackle such an immense project, not only would the engineers have to build the bridge, they also had to design and build the machines they'd need to build it. With the passing of the Seven Bridges Act, construction finally began on the 26th of April 1992. During the summer, 70 acres of construction site was built from scratch, using a whopping 400,000 cubic metres of concrete. Here, massive casting sheds were built so that the 2,302 sections that would make up the approach viaducts could be made right next to the river. Dams and access ramps had to be built and a road was installed right across the riverbed. All this infrastructure had to withstand the twice daily battering by the tidal force of the River Severn. Also, a system of piles was needed to make sure the immense weight of the new bridge didn't damage the existing rail tunnel below. Floating cranes were shipped in from Europe and Japan. Although they'd need massive strengthening work to deal with the huge task ahead, they'd be essential for placing the caissons, the immense hollow feet needed to support the bridge. By August 1992, Construction was underway on the first of the caissons. By autumn 1992, the lifting barge called Lisa A had been modified to cope with the immense demands of the second seven crossing. And in November 1992, the first caisson was finished. Weighing in at 1,600 tons, that's 10 jumbo jets, this would provide the perfect lifting test for Lisa A. The huge concrete footing was placed onto two Lanson tractor units, the same machines used by NASA for moving space rockets, before being moved nervously down onto SAR-3, the boat that would be used to move all heavy objects offshore. During the first week in December 1992, the test lift was successful, and just one month later, Lisa A moved into position. The team held their breath as N46, the first of 36 offshore supports for the second seven crossing, was launched aboard SAR-3. The special boat has four intelligent engines linked to satellite positioning to maintain its exact position against the powerful currents of the River Severn. 
caisson is offloaded by Lisa A at the exact moment of high tide and is held in position as the tide drops away before being lowered into its final resting place on the exposed rocks. After two years of planning and two trial runs, Caisson N46 was successfully placed on the 15th of January 1993. But this was only the smallest of the footings, and now one would need placing every three and a half weeks to keep on track. By summer 1993, the clock was ticking. The crew of jack-up barges increased to six to keep on schedule, and the construction crew used every available second of access to the foundations at low tide. In July of 93, the construction team faced their biggest challenge yet, as work began on the main bridge towers. The 2,000 ton concrete footings would push the machines to their limit, but with the project now in full swing, practice made perfect. The caisson was lifted onto bags of grout for levelling, before the concrete barge moved in to fill the footing. Work could now begin constructing the 140 metre high towers above. With enough footings now in place, the construction of the five kilometres of the beautifully S-shaped viaduct began on the Welsh side first in August 1993. A special 230 metre gantry was designed and built to launch the thousands of sections of viaduct out into position. The method is called the balanced cantilever method. By adding sections on one side and then the other, it produces a pair of balanced structures. This first section of viaduct was just the beginning of two years of relentless hard work until the viaduct would ultimately meet up with the main bridge in the middle. By October 93, the main bridge tower was ready for its 1,300 tonne lower crossbeam. SAR 3 slowly transported the enormous load into the fast flowing estuary before the Lisa A crane lifted the massive beam into position, 33 metres above high water. Four months later, the upper crossbeam was ready too, but the tower wasn't. So it was placed onto the lower beam until the pylon towers were high enough. The whole process was watched by the safety team. This potentially hazardous environment was successfully managed without any fatalities on the entire four-year construction. By now, three whole 100-metre spans of viaduct were complete footings were in place right out into the estuary. By October, the bridge pylon tower M2 was finally tall enough for the upper crossbeam to be raised into its final position. Soon after this achievement, the first road sections of the main bridge were transported out onto open water. Just lifting this one section took six hours. Now nearing the end of 1994, the English side to the main cable stay bridge was finally beginning to take shape. And on the 30th of November 1994, the last case on footing was placed onto its foundations. In early 1995, now three years into the construction, the hostile weather had put the project three months behind schedule. A mammoth effort was now needed to make up the lost time. And by summer 1995, both two-kilometre viaducts were nearly completed. Now at last, the viaduct approach would be connected to the main bridge deck. The last section of viaduct was gently lowered finally completing the link from bridge to land. The whole project was now beginning to feel like the end was in sight. Soon the two bridge sections would meet and the two sides would be joined forever. On Sunday the 12th of November 1995, the last section of bridge was placed aboard SAR 3, before being lifted the 37 metres into its position as the final piece of the jigsaw. It bridged the gap between the English and Welsh sides, 
joining the 456 metre main span of the Cable Stay Bridge. And then, the first people were able to make the crossing. The team were now on the home straight. The last cables were lifted into position and tensioned before a team of abseilers fitted stabilising cables. Underneath, the bridge had its very own monorail system installed for servicing the 5 kilometre structure. Finally, the pioneering windshielding was fitted, capable of withstanding mighty gusts up to 180 kilometres per hour, along with lighting, signs and other road furniture. Now the crossing was practically complete. On the 12th of May 1996, 20,000 people walked across the bridge, raising £1 million for charity. And on the 5th of June, Prince Charles opened the bridge. Despite the power of the natural forces facing this project, the second seven crossing had been completed on time and on budget.